Hi friends, it's Amanda May with Ardith Design. Welcome to my Counted Cross Stitch channel where we celebrate all things cross stitch, stitching, save the stitches, sustainable stitches, <laughs> uh, things that I've designed, things that I'm stitching that other people have designed, all those good things. Welcome. I'm so happy that you found my channel. I am just a quirky mom, uh, an artist, a lady, a wife, and I'm just happy to be here. And I appreciate all of you, especially all of you that have returned to my little corner of <laughs> the floss tube universe. I am quickly approaching my one year floss tube anniversary. I'm so excited. <laughs> And I am a little over two years of counted cross stitch, actually stitching. I have been collecting for about six years, but now I am full force in it. I am pre-ordering kits. I am lusting after online auctions. I've officially purchased my first, you know, 19th century <laughs> sampler that I'm ready to reproduce. I mean, all the things. I absolutely love this community. I have learned such a tremendous amount from all of you. And I just want you to know that I see you and I appreciate you wherever you are around the world. You have helped to make my life better. I'm celebrating my son's second birthday and he was really the reason I got into cross stitch. And you know, that whole thing that you steal from a movie, just keep swimming. When life hands you lemons, you make lemonade and pick up a needle and start stitching. <laughs> and with that, I got my lemon tree. I've got my stitching. Life is good. <laughs> On this episode, we're going to do my library books. Well, not really library, my library, as in I am curating a library collection of sampler books and cross-stitch books here in my home and I love it and I think I need a new bookcase. <laughs> I have filled up a bookcase filled with books. I was inspired last year before I ever started Floss Tube, I was watching Kitten Stitcher and she would feature some books like Plain and Fancy as one of the books and I promptly went out and bought it. <laughs> and I have started really collecting the books ever since. I, I don't know, I find it strangely exhilarating to find a brand new book or new to me at least in the used bookstore with gorgeous patterns, even dated patterns and just to see the progression of stitching. I love the encyclopedias of needlework that explain things besides counted cross stitch. But of course my passion lies with cross stitch itself. So today I wanna to show you some of the books that I have picked up over the last couple weeks. And I'll do a little video in this floss tube of the used bookstore that I specifically traveled to. I went up north, I traveled over the Mason-Dixon line up to Pennsylvania to go to a used bookstore called York Emporium. I have no affiliation with them other than wanting to go and explore. They're in York, Pennsylvania. And I heard about them because one of my husband's favorite authors was doing a book signing a couple years ago. And with small children, I just wasn't able to attend the book signing, but came back overjoyed and said, you know, Amanda May, you have to go to this bookstore. It is amazing because I have a thing for used bookstores. I do. I grew up in the Bay Area. I grew up in uh, Monterey Bay, uh, in Bay, south of San Francisco. And I grew up in Santa Cruz and there were so many cool like, junk stores and used bookstores. And, you know, you you come for the sea glass on the beach in Davenport. You go to the boardwalk and ride the carousel, and then you go and explore downtown, and you go to the bead store, and you go to the bookstore. And I remember when I was really little, Woolworths was still down in downtown. Uh, I was I was in Santa Cruz with the Loma Prieta earthquake, and I survived. My mom survived too. She, uh, the building actually like 
came down as she ran out of a building. But Santa Cruz always will hold a special place in my heart. And with that, my love of used books and bookstores. And yeah, I just love it. So I'm going to share some of the books. I'm going to share two of the things that I am working on stitching. I'm going to show you my color palette for my sampler that I am about to do an adaptation of. We're going to talk about the fair, the Maryland State Fair. And... Oh, and lighthouses, because one of my wonderful viewers asked a question about what lighthouses would be a good stitch if you wanted something not terribly advanced with all with all full crosses. So I want to show you some of the lighthouse patterns that I have in my stash that I would recommend. And again, I'm biased because they're in my stash. These This is not the definitive list of lighthouses. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really excited to be here. And I'm so excited that you all are here uh, on this journey with me. I had a couple uh, little housekeeping bits to talk about. First off, thank you to everyone who liked my patriotic room decor video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was fun to create and we're still adding to it. And with young kids, they constantly surprise me. <laughs> what can and cannot be put up for decor, what will be immediately torn down, <laughs> and what will strangely be left in place. You just never know, right? Thank you all again for your likes on that video. I know that it wasn't filled with cross stitch, but I'm hoping in the next coming years that I will have more nautical and patriotic themed stitching to add to my collection. <laughs> And I want to talk a little housekeeping about the Maryland State Fair. Why, you ask? Well, thanks to Floss Tube last year, Yellow House Crafts, I believe Stitching and Sequence, McKenna, and a couple other of you fabulous stitchers. I apologize if I'm not naming all of you. <laughs> Just know that I saw your fair videos. I know Vana, the Twisted Stitcher, talked about entering stuff into the fair and the importance of entering your items into the fair. Yellow House, Yellow House Crafter, I will link her below. I haven't seen a new video from her since she had her baby last year. I hope she's doing well. But she was the first person to turn me on to the idea of entering your work into your states or Providence or the area that you live uh, internationally or within the 50 US of A as American territories. <laughs> entering your work into the fair to not necessarily win the ribbons while winning ribbons are fantastic <laughs> and prize money. Yes, please. Right. <laughs> but entering your pieces into the fair because you're exhibiting work of count and cross stitch for the new generation to see and potentially fall in love with. And I just love that idea. So I went onto the internet's and I got the stuff and read the official rules for the Maryland State Fair. And I even called up and left a message with uh, the Section E superintendent of the counted thread, counted cross stitch and embroidery section for the State Fair that's being held in Timonium, Maryland. And I'm just gonna let you know that this is a work in progress. I will report back in the coming weeks about this, but if you are interested, I will link below this paper and it has all of the different sections that you can enter for Maryland into the state fair and the different requirements for each of the, they call it per class, which I say category, they're saying it's class. And I went through and I tried to see if I could match up maybe work that I had done and what it what what would it qualify for within the class. Now the question that I have for the superintendent, which I left a message for, is what constitutes a frame for your framed work? Because the it says all pictures and samplers must be framed with picture wire with the eye screws and then the back has to be mounted with brown paper, the brown paper backing. But it does not specify if you have to have it on glass and if you can have any embellishments. 
and I am reaching out to see about if you can do like a Priscilla and Chelsea Real Housewives of Cross Stitch Finish or Java Girl Stitches with her beautiful covered buttons. Anyway, you get the drift, like adding the embellishments to your piece, if that is okay, if that is part of the rules and guidelines. I have not been to the Maryland State Fair before. And I went onto Pinterest and I went onto Google and I did everything I could to find the exhibits on the open category, the open access. It's basically the non 4-H FFA, Future Farmers of America. It's the open for the general public basically <laughs> to enter the open exhibit for the home arts exhibit, to be an exhibitor. Uh, I found one picture on Pinterest and it was a piece uh, it was a baseball themed Orioles, the Baltimore Orioles stitched on Ada. Didn't tell me a year, didn't show me a frame, didn't show me the background to see what, <laughs> what the exhibit even looked like. So I am on a hunt to find out what the exhibit even looks like and what their requirements are. They do say due to size restrictions and space restrictions, it has to be less than 36 inches wide. That's the frame. The frame can't be more than 36 inches wide. However, Afghans, because they're not framed, have to be a different requirement. So anyway, I will report back once I learn more. But y'all, I think I'm going to enter at least one thing into the fair. They have categories for a punch needle. They have samplers. They have the stitching one over one on 25 count or higher. <laughs> they have most of the categories are stitching a picture that is a purchased design. So basically, if I as a designer want to in if I want to enter one of my original patterns in, it would have to be under the miscellaneous category. And the rule is it has to be something that was stitched between August of 2018 and August of 2019. However, you have to enter <laughs> <laughs> you have to do your pre-entry form before July 31st of this year and exhibitors have to drop off their stuff at the fair August 19th and 20th. Again, I'm not affiliated with the fair in any way. I'm just really excited and I want to enter. And if you're not a Maryland resident, I hope I didn't just babble on about the fair, but I'm excited. Yay, so I will report back. Okay, so that's my housekeeping business. Should we see what I stitched on this week? I think we should. Okay. All right. <sighs> okay. I am working on carriage house samplings, the comfort lighthouse. I, oh my gosh, I love this piece. I can't even tell you how much I love this piece. And it's been a purse project. I've been taking it in the car, so it's a little wrinkled, but this is my first house, everyone. This is the first house I've ever stitched. That's the first ship I've ever stitched. Not the first mermaid but I love it. I love it so much. Again, this is on 36 count sea fog by R and R reproductions. And all of my threads are sulky 12 weight cotton stitched <laughs> one strand over two. And I love the coverage. I love that little crab. And then over this house is like the big crab. So I'm excited to start that bad boy. Oh, and so the Maryland State Fair, one of their entries is you can stitch something that starts with the letter M, like moon, mermaid, Maryland, mom, <laughs> basically anything that starts with M. And I thought, well, if I finish this in time and I frame it and I do it all within the specifications, maybe I should enter this into the fair. You know, iron it, press it, have it ready. <laughs> I just love it so much. I, I love it so much. Okay. And on the topic of lighthouses, I'll show you some lighthouse patterns that I have in my stash that I would like to stitch at some point. And they're all the, I, I want to say I've shown them before, but just in case, here we go again. We have, these are all the North Carolina lighthouses. These are that you can get as kits from the Lighthouse Destinations, the Cape Hatteras, all that, they're from 91. So they're older on Ada with the threads. And I thought, well, if I'm going to stitch them, my husband picked all these out, <laughs> that maybe I could do a, like an over dye, right? And 
I think that would be nice. Do an over dye on the Ada and just stitch it on the kit Ada. Again, another lighthouse. When I went to the Cape Henry Lighthouse in Virginia Beach last year, it is on a military installation. So if you want to go see the lighthouse and go to the gift shop and everything, you have to go through the security check and the bomb sniffing and the get out of your car, all that good stuff, right? It's worth it. It's really cool. It is on an active military installation. So that's pretty cool. In the gift shop, they actually had counted cross stitch kit and needlepoint kit for the Cape Henry Lighthouse. But I was, you know, with children, I had like, there was a meltdown. It was hot. Like, a meltdown of the kids, <laughs> not of anything on the installation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I did not pick up a kit, but here's hoping maybe this next year when we go, because you have to be 42 inches tall, at least to climb the stairs of the lighthouse to go up to the lighthouse. 42, you know, that's the number. Uh, <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? Fun fact, I also I also have 42 Doctor Who shirts. And my husband said, well, don't you want a 43rd? And I said, no, I can't have a 43rd because then it won't be the best number. And then on Friday, I bought my 43rd Doctor Who t-shirt. Moving on. Here we go. I love this one. I love all of them. This is uh, out of Ocean City. And I want to say it was from Salty Yarns, but they don't have the um, the, the store tag but the Outer Banks lighthouses and all the fun. I love the diamond pattern on that. I love it. And I went through my magazines and this is Dee Morgan. She is very, very popular in the early mid nineties. I see a lot of her prints out and about. She's got lovely, lovely stuff. So this was in For the Love of Cross Stitch. And it, the, the, the pattern is called uh, Keeper of the Lighthouse. And I thought this was really nice. And it has her font style, uh, her font and her writing. And I, I just really like this piece. I like the, I mean, it's quintessential D. Morgan. As soon as I saw, as soon as I saw the, the font, I knew it was her. You know, you know, you just know. So there's that. And then I have this uh, calendar, which... A shout out to Tranquil Stitches, Cheryl over in West Virginia. She showed in a, one of her recent videos some calendars that she had picked up online and how sweet they are. I also have a collection of calendars of random years. I have the Denmark, some of the Denmark calendars, and it makes me think of Linda, Blue Horse, Yellow Cow. Hi, Linda. So this, I... I really liked this lighthouse. This is in, I just, with the flowers. And these had different, they had the landmarks and the lighthouses. And I'm a sucker for a, a, for a good poppy. And oh, castles. Well, there's landmarks, castles, I don't know. <laughs> but there's a lighthouse. I also have a dolphin kit. Now this is full coverage with backstitching. So I'm not saying this is going to be like the easiest thing to stitch, but I'm biased. I love dolphins. There's a dolphin. And again, it comes on the white, but with the full coverage, you don't need to dye it or anything. So I just thought that was really fun. I love dolphins. I love them. I love them. And for everyone out there that knits, because you all talk about magical stitches. Okay. I don't understand how you put things together and create beautiful. <sighs> Look at that. Isn't that fun? I want that in my life. In case you, in case you didn't know, I love a good themed sweater. A good themed sweater is what it's all about. It's too warm in Maryland right now to wear a good themed sweater. But if you're in Australia or New Zealand and you're cold and you put on a kitschy sweater, think of me. I love me a good knit. All cotton or non-wool because I have to be difficult. <laughs> so I love that knit. And then, you know, again, I love a good mermaid. Shameless plug. <laughs> All right. On the topic of mermaids, in my new bag that I got, it is my new pattern. 
that I got from Barbara Anna. She posted this on Instagram. I pretty much, my jaw dropped, like hit the floor. I ran to my computer and bought this. I mean, and I know I'm coming from a place of privilege to be able to do that, okay? Yes, it was $6.99 American. It's a French, Creative Poppy is out of France. I don't know where Barbara Anna is. I don't know if she's in France, if she's in Europe, if she's in Mexico. I don't know where she is. She's elusive and magical and I love her stuff. So I'll, I'll stop fangirling and just show you. This is Flowers from the Sea. I went ahead and pulled all of the colors that I could. And y'all, I had a rough Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, I had a rough day. So I was like, okay, honey, when you get home from work, I'm gonna get in my car and I gotta go buy some thread. And now when I say go buy some thread, like I had two skeins to buy, okay? I, I think, yes, 503 and 823. I had two skeins to buy. Because I went through my stash, you know, I've got thrifted fabrics, purchased fabrics. I, I had bought in fabric, I had bought in threads that were already in floss away bags. I had my Victorian motto. I pulled a sulky equivalent. I pulled, these were all bobbinated. I didn't bobbinate these. These were pre-bobbinated from a wonderful person who donated their stash to the thrift store. But I needed two threads. Y'all, 17 miles one way to go get thread. But it was alone time in my car listening to the music that I want to listen to, which I take as a win. Because if I have to listen to Disney Junior one more time, y'all know. <laughs> it's a little things. When you can sit in silence and drive for 17 miles and consider that a win. <laughs> so I have all of this stuff. And yes, if you're wondering what this vinyl bag is. When, you, when I go and get my teeth cleaned, they give you this little vinyl pouch with the travel size toothbrush and little toothpaste, you know, because Americans on our teeth, right? <laughs> when I lived in England, literally I would smile and people were like, oh, you're from California. I'm like, how do you know? Well, first off, you know, Americans, we take up a lot of space. And second off, they pretty much know. <laughs> okay. So I can't use this forever. So I went to Joann's today and I ended up getting their proprietary brand of floss organizer sleeves just to kind of organize this better. Barbara Anna is brilliant. This pattern, it has 18 colors. She charted it all in DMC. It is fantastic. I already, why don't I just show you what I've done so far instead of rambling on. Oh, this bag I got at, Target. I got it at one of the big box stores and it was on sale. I got it for $8 and I love it. I'm, I'm like on this vinyl kick. I'm a, I'm a visual learner. So for me, I like to see what's inside of a bag and yes, I could do the little labels and stuff, but I, I'm on my vinyl kick. That's where I'm at. So let me show you where I am. Da -da -da -da. I have, it started, and I love it. The greens are a conversion. They are not DMC. This is the Victorian motto, and then the darker green teal is the sulky, but everything inside here is all DMC. I, I am loving it so far. I, as you know, I am an impulse starter. I cannot wait for that perfect fabric or that perfect whatever. I'm just, I like dive in. So I had gotten this piece of fabric. It is a Charles Cap <laughs> Charles Craft 28 count Irish linen. And I had gotten it at the thrift store. It was clean in the Charles Craft, you know, the clear tube Charles. And I pulled it out and I started on it. After driving 17 miles, 17 miles. After my round trip adventure, I started stitching it and I love it. And I cannot wait to finish this. And I feel like I'm propelled to maybe finish it again for one of the entries for the state fair. Again, I, I did my pre-entry form. Like I started my profile thing already for, my, for the state fair. 
and I have to have that in by July 31st, which means I would have to have this stitched, pressed, stretched, mounted, framed, everything before that deadline. We'll see. I'm living vicariously through everyone who is doing the Magical Moth, S-A-L. Oh my gosh, love it. So when I stumbled into my local quilting shop this week because... I can't help myself. <laughs> I got the last two fat quarters that they had of this gorgeous like butterfly moth fabric. Do I know what I'm going to do with it? No. Did I buy it? Yes. Did I spend my $20 budget this last week? Yes, I did. I got the pattern. I got these. I got the pattern, this, the DMC floss. Yeah. Oh, and then I got, I got three Save the Stitches. All of that was my $20 budget. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like calculating in my head if I went over budget, but I didn't. Okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these, but I love them. I wanna say they're part of the Alexander Henry line, the Gosley line, but I don't think they are the Gasleys. I, if you all know offhand, looking at this fabric, again, I don't have the selvage to tell me what it is. I, I'm sorry, I don't know the fabric line, but I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so. Can I show you my colors that I picked for my reproduction sampler? Yes, okay. So in another bag I bought for $3 on clearance. These are all sulky, and these greens were just me color matching, so these are not part of the palette. Let me pull those out. So this is just a quick little hint at my colors, and I'm so excited. I called up Dying to Stitch and talked to them about color matching my linen. Now, my original is from 1839, and it's stitched on 30 count linen. And the base fabric now for R&R, &R, they can they don't have a 30 count that matches. So I have on order, it's not here yet, but I have on order a sample of nine by nine inches of their 32 count and their 36 count linen to do a test stitch. So what I'm thinking is that maybe I'll do like a little teaser and with my colors, do like a little stitch on the nine by nine and then release just that little teaser part because the sampler is big. It, it is not something that will be done this year. It's something that would be amazing if I had it for Nashville, you know, Nashville 2020 or Nashville 2021. <laughs> but I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself there as well because... I still, I've been so busy. I don't even have my patterns with a distributor yet. But you can find them online. You can find my stuff online. But I can't get ahead of myself on getting to Nashville. But I would like to go to Nashville. And I'm just going to keep saying it out loud. Those are my colors. I got my fabric on order from Dying to Stitch. And fun fact, if you want to call up and talk to Anne or Robin or Pat, I don't know if Pat actually works in the shop or if she just does the linen, the fabric end of the company, but Anne was delightful when I met her in real life. And Robin was delightful on the phone when I was gushing my heart out over my new love of samplers. <laughs> they were more than willing to help me out. So I'm really excited. And again, if you want fast service from, your on, from an online shop, I highly recommend Trish Turner of Threads and Twined out of Windsor, California. Don't let that cross-country shipping fool you. She flat rate shipping and she's fast and she uses a chipboard to keep your pattern safe and all the things. <laughs> okay, should we do Save the Stitches? I think we should. Oh my gosh, and I still haven't even gotten to the books yet, y'all. I'm so excited. I'm just rambling. Okay. Here are the three pieces that I found, and I'm so excited. Okay. Stitch number one. Save the stitches. This is a stitch, and it looks like it is a recreation 
of the J and P Coates thread advertisement from the late 19th century into the early 20th century when JP Coates had like the little postcards and they usually it was like with Prang P R A N G and company and usually it would like double up with like cigarette ads the advertisements and they were really cute and they were small many of these are now in the public domain if you want to research and find out I think this is a recreation of a public domain image of J and P coat stitching but look at that lady stitched it has initials 1992 and it's like full coverage on the floor and then the back here is negative space the cuckoo clock and the pictures and isn't that delightful it is dirty and it's stitched on 14 count it looks like an ivory white ada with some back stitching and the frame is the quintessential 1990s heart put a heart on it i really like it it looks like the person framed it at home because you can see the creases which looks like from a grocery uh, paper grocery bag which no judgment i love utilizing and reutilizing things so awesome love it what's black white black and colors for hand and machine jp coats all right the next piece that i got is actually a needlepoint piece but i saw it from across the room they'd actually were bringing in donations and i was like <laughs> I was like grabbing it was like faster than zombie hands like it was like i was pawing is that the right word pawing at it here we go just keep swimming just keep swimming oh, gorgeous now this I can't I can't tell you that I looked at it and went I knew this is a 1991 dimensions kit of a fish no y'all it told me on the back dry clean only dimensions the kit number and the year there you go I love it the one thing that I have noticed about all the needlepoint that I pick up is that it's never stretched perfectly. I heard Gary Parr talk to several needlework needleworkers who also talk about the difficulty in stretching and mounting and finishing their work. I am not familiar because I have never done needlepoint before, but you can see the the ripples here. But there's really lovely stitching in the back stitching. And it's just a really lovely piece. And I think it's going to go up right now with my abstract sailboats that I showed a couple weeks ago. I love it. And my last save the stitches. I Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to jostle you there. My last save the stitches is a sampler. And I believe it's from the same person because the, the, the initials and the year looks like it was stitched in the same year. This is also pretty dirty. Uh, it looks like I probably could vacuum it. And it looks like she also framed this at home and it's really, it's really puffy. And I think it's really fun. So I have a little sampler stitched on Ada. And it's got the 90s colors. So fun. Isn't that fun? I love it. Okay. I'm going to show you all the used books that I got. Okay. Again, curating a collection of needle needlework stuff. <laughs> love and friendship samplers. I'm really excited about this one. I just got this yesterday. Yes, yesterday. And I had not heard of her, the designer before. The book... So all of these are hand charted, meaning it's not computer generated. So all the symbols are drawn by hand in this hardcover book. In this, it's all black and white, but in the center, she shows the completed stitches that encompass all the patterns in the book. So I'm going to quickly show you those completed stitches without showing you a pattern on one of the sides. What I liked about this book was the 
this is a wedding sampler and I really liked the flower and the motif here. So I'm just going to flip through just the center part here of this book. I, it had a ship and I liked that ship sampler. The house are <laughs> the fruit bowl with the gourds and the artichoke and the eggplant. I was like looking for the carrot and the cabbage. <laughs> uh, and then they had, there's a couple other ones that were really cute. They, this one, Love Conquers All, and it's got that, that geometric tessellation pattern I thought was nice. And oh, this one here, I liked, it looked very like Art Nouveau or the Pennsylvania Fractor Art. Then, I'm sorry, I, this last page. These were the two other ones that I liked. The bouquet here, and it looked... It almost looked like if you change the colors on this and change the palette, this basket almost looked like a spider web to me. Like it could be like a Halloween stitch. So I like the idea of taking these older kind of dated color palettes and changing them up. Wouldn't this be fun? Like as a Halloween in Halloween colors. And then I loved this bird border here. I loved this one. Colors as is. I wouldn't change the colors. <laughs> okay. Apparently, I like this book so much, I bought it twice. So I have the America's Best Cross Stitch book. And I want to say I've shown you all this book before. But the sunflowers on it. I got this one at York Emporium. And it just has some really nice things. But I'm looking at this. Look at this. Dust ruffle. All in cross stitch. I challenge anyone to tag me on Instagram and show me a real life dust ruffle that was meticulously cross-stitched and then put on practically on the floor. <sighs> kind of like the cross-stitch bibs. Why? Why? I don't understand. <laughs> but look at this berries. I love it. So this book is wonderful. Maybe I'll do a flip foot, flip through of this another time because I really do enjoy it. I'm gonna quickly show you what I got. And maybe next video I'll do a like a flip through because there are so many good things. This is a, another adventure, the American Needlework that I got in Pennsylvania. I got Home is Where the Heart Is, not the movie. <laughs> okay. I was cracking up. I was watching Erica D. House, her latest video. I'll link below. She was talking, she got at, 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 used books, right? Like fangirling her too. And she showed <laughs> that she got a dollhouse pattern. And we we're talking, and I'm like, I just bought a dollhouse pattern too. <laughs> because I need more hobbies in my life. Here's uh, plans for a dollhouse. And then inside, the gentleman was so nice. Uh, he gave this one to me for free because it wasn't priced. So I got the plans to make this dollhouse and it was one of those promotional things but y'all have you priced dollhouses before holy guacamole i had no idea i had i had no idea so i'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> i had oh i do have some patterns that i had gotten that have like the miniature stitching the stitching in miniature for dollhouses and then we, i have the art of needle graph this one's really cool and geometric and then i have 501 cross stitch designs and another really cool thing so we're gonna go through those books next time oh my gosh thank you all so much for joining me i am so excited that you came back i would love it if you liked subscribed left a comment below, go on my website, tell me what you want to see, all those good things. I appreciate you. Just know that you matter, your stitching matters, and you're phenomenal. Have a great stitching week. Take care, my friends.